I'm going to show you how to create complex muscle animations in Blender in under 10 minutes. It's super easy and you don't even need a powerful PC. Starting with the simple rig, adding the muscles and deforming the skin, going from this to this. So to get started straight away you can download this model I found on Sketchfab for free and the link to download this will be in the description below. Starting with step 1, it's prepping the model. Once you have the model in Blender, you want to hide the muscles so you can only see the skeleton bones. So select all the muscles and press Ctrl H. Now you're left with just the bones. Since it will be parenting the geometry to the rig, it will be easier to have the mesh separated into three sections. The shoulder, the upper arm and the lower arm. Here you can remove any unnecessary bones that won't affect the overall animations, such as the hand bones and the finger bones. Make sure you apply any transformations or scaling to the geometry by pressing Ctrl A and selecting all transforms to deltas. For the muscle setup, you can unhide the geometry by pressing Alt-H and with them still selected, it's a good idea to move them to a separate collection. So press M on your keyboard and create a new collection and call it Muscles. There are a lot of deeper muscles that won't generally affect the deformation of this rig, so we can go ahead and delete them. As a general rule, if you see another muscle behind another, we can delete it. This will save us a lot of time when it comes to rigging and simulating these muscles. The main ones you should keep are these three deltoids, the biceps, the triceps and all the muscles in the forearms depending on how much detail you actually want. Once you've adjusted the mesh, make sure to apply all transforms and you're good to go. On to step 2. For the second step, we need to create a basic rig to control the skeleton. So press Shift A and create a single bone. Press Tab to enter into edit mode and move the bone to align it with the shoulder bone. Next, just extrude the bone by pressing E and align it to the upper arm bone. Do these same steps with the other bones along the arm and you should have this basic rig. The wrist is a little bit more complicated. When you rotate your wrist, your forearm bones actually rotate around each other, which will affect the muscles on top. So to emulate this, duplicate the forearm bone and align this with one of the bones in the forearm. In this case, it's the ulna bone. Do the exact same for the other one, which is the radius, and parent them back to the original. Next, you need to create two locators at the base of both of these bones. So with the tail of one of these bones selected, press Shift S and select Cursor to Selected. With the 3D cursor in the right place, you can now add an empty. Scale it down if you need to and always apply transformations to deltas. Do the exact same with the other bone and you should have two locators at the base of both of these bones. Next, you'll need to parent the locators to the wrist. So go into Pose Mode by pressing Ctrl Tab and in the Outliner, select both of those empties. Then shift click the wrist bone and press Ctrl P and set the parent to bone. The locator should now follow the wrist. The last part of this setup is adding a damp track constraint to both of these bones. So under bone constraints, add a damp track constraint and select the corresponding empty. Now when you rotate the wrist, the bones will rotate around each other. The last thing to do is to parent the geometry to the rig. We'll be parenting instead of skinning to save on computing power. So following the similar steps as parenting to the empties, in pose mode, select the geometry and shift select the bone and press Ctrl P and parent to the bone. Do this with all the bones of the arms and when it comes to the forearm, parent each of the separate bones to the respective joints we made earlier. And you should have a functioning arm rig. Moving on to step 3, we'll be rigging the muscles. Now this is fairly simple and consists of creating multiple B-bone setups across the arm. To start, you first need to change the viewport display of the bones from octahedral to B-bone. Then you can create a bone at the top of the muscle. Extrude another bone out to cover the majority of the muscle and then press E again to extrude another bone out at the end. The two bones at the end of this chain are going to act as controllers for the main B-bone in the middle. So select the middle bone and head over to the bendy bone settings into bone properties and increase the segments. To control this bendy bone, select the end bone and unparent it by pressing Alt P and selecting clear parent. Parent this control bone to the appropriate bone on your arm rig. You might need to look at an anatomical map for reference of the insertion points. For the bicep, the lower bone should be parented to the radius joint, so shift select that bone and press Ctrl P to parent. To make the bendy bone follow this control, add a stretch 2 constraint and point it at this end bone. Make sure the starting bone is parented to the correct bone and you're good to go. With bendy bones you get this nice squash and stretch which also preserves volume and this is great for the muscles contracting and stretching. Next, just skin these bones to the muscle and you're good to go. You can always edit the placement of these bones in edit mode to, to make sure you get the right deformations. Now it's just a case of repeating these steps for the rest of the muscles in the arm. 
Next comes the fun bit. In this next step we'll be simulating these muscles, but before we start simulating, add some basic animation to the arm so that we have something to go off. It doesn't have to be amazing, just something that we can use to adjust our simulation settings. It's also best practice to have a few frames at the start of this animation so the simulate can calculate a rest position. So to start, select the muscle and head over to the physics tab and select cloth. If you press play right away, you can see it drop straight down to the floor. That's because we haven't set up our pinned group. Now pinning allows you to define vertices that won't be affected by the simulation and in our case will be instead driven by the rig. To set up the pinning, you'll need to head into the data properties panel and create a new vertex group and call it pins. I like to head into weight paint mode for this, mainly because you can add a smooth fall off to the affected vertices. You want to paint areas at the top and bottom of your muscle, leaving the main bulk of the muscle unaffected. Once you've blocked out some areas, go back into the physics settings and under the shape menu, you can find the option to define your pin group. Just select the vertex group and press play, and you should see the pinning taking effect. Another important setting is to make sure that dynamic mesh is ticked. This will make sure your mesh doesn't scrunch up and collapse in on itself from the pinning. Now it's just a case of going back and forth and smoothing the pin group to get the effect you want. Some of the main settings I use for the cloth are checking the pressure box and increasing the value to stop the mesh from collapsing in on itself, increasing the vertex mass a little and dampening to get the right jiggle effect. Here are the settings I used for the bicep muscles. You also want to add some collision with the skeleton, so select the bones in the skeleton mesh and apply a collision modifier. In general, the muscles that are going to move around the most are the biceps and triceps. When you're happy with one setup, the easiest way to transfer all this data to another muscle is to first select the muscle you want to copy this to, select the original muscle and press Ctrl L and select Link Modifiers. This will copy the modifiers and keep all the settings you use the same. You can then use this as a base to add more tweaks if you want, but remember to paint the pin group on this new muscle as well. When you're happy with the simulation, head over to the Physics tab and under Cache, press Bake All Dynamics. This will bake all of the objects to a cache and will speed up animation playback. Finally, on to step 5 which is adding the skin. If you already have a base mesh, you can skip this first part, but if you don't, just add a cylinder and delete the top and bottom faces. After you've done that, just adjust the shape of the cylinder to best fit your overall model. Make sure to add some loot cuts too, and as a general rule, try and keep the topology even. With the base mesh complete, skin this to the armature by pressing Ctrl P and set automatic weights. You don't need to paint any weights here, it's just to get the mesh following the base deformation. After that, head into the geometry nodes tab and add a new network. Start off with a subdivide mesh node and a set position node. Next, add a collection info node and select the muscles collection. Make sure to set this to relative as well. Next, add a realize instance node and a geometry proximity node. In the source position, add a position node and connect the position output to the set position node. And with that, the mesh should be tightly bound to the muscles. You can add some offset to this by adding a mix vector node after the proximity node and in the second input, add the position node. You can then use the factor to blend between the two. You can use this setup for any muscle system you're creating. And if you use any of the tips and tricks I mentioned in this video, you can share it with me on Instagram, TikTok or Twitter and I'd love to see it. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe and like the video to help push this video out to more people that might find it useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.